Hey guys, my name is Chelsea Blacker and a month ago I attended the Titan Summit in Toronto. Um, long and short, uh, I would definitely go again next year um, and it was an amazing experience. Um, but the reason I'm making this video about the Titan Summit is because I really struggled to find reviews and information about past uh, Titan Summits from independent sources. Um, I've been a follower of Robbins for a long time, between uh, his books, the podcast, the YouTube videos. Um, so, and every year I do the New Year's Personal Mastery uh, online course. So I had faith, but I also just wanted a bit more information. And personally, I found it really difficult to find. Um, so I've made this video, hopefully if you're considering going, um, this video will provide a bit more insight about what happens at the Titan Summit. So if you have any questions, definitely tweet to me, uh, at Chelsea Blacker, um, or put a comment below. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna go through the cost uh, before I attended, kind of what I was thinking, the check-in process, um, how a day goes uh, during the event, um, my observations about the event, um, a tiny, tiny review of the speakers, just because each speaker was outstanding um, and to go through all of them would take like weeks. <laughs> um, gifts and swag, so some examples of the kind of things that uh, they give you at the event, which was really cool. Um, at tips and tricks, so if you're packing for your first Titan Summit, definitely I have some tips for that. Um, and finally, my final thoughts. Um, so yeah, tweet me at Chelsea Blacker or a comment. Um, if you like this, if anyone even watches this, um, I will uh, be happy to, to put a bit more information out there about what I learned from some of the different sessions, etc. So let me know if you want that. Alrighty, diving right in. So costings. Um, so I spent about 15,000 uh, pounds. So the, that is approximately 20,000 US dollars on this event. It is a four day event. So to think that you're going to spend four grand, sorry, uh, you're going to spend three thousand seven hundred and fifty pound a day um, for four days. I mean, that's really expensive, right? So you need to be pretty convinced that you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, I would say that I've noticed there are some different pricing models um, that Robin kind of releases throughout the year, or you know, kind of different combinations of deals if you do the personal mastery conference. I think that's in the summer. I think there's like a double deal at some point. So just keep a, a, an awareness for that. Um, but yeah, it's an expensive event, that's for sure. Before I attended, okay, part two. So before I attended, I'm not gonna lie, I was a tiny bit, I, annoyed is the right word, honestly. Um, I was annoyed because I felt like there wasn't much uh, before the event that proved what the structure of the event was going to be. So, for instance, there was, I didn't have an agenda. There was no clear program that was sent out before the Titan Summit to say, hey, day one is going to be this, day two is that, these are the people speaking on different days. You just, I, I'm a planner, that's how I live my life, and I really struggled coming to Toronto and not having a clue how each day was going to look and the timelines for those days. Um, so that was one thing that kind of had bugged me. And another was that, and maybe some people would find this petty, but the hotel was not included. If you're going to be spending about 20,000 US dollars on an event, I really don't think it's outlandish to think that you're going to get the hotel included. Um, so I did contact the Ritz, which is where the event takes place in Toronto, um, and the Ritz-Carlton, their prices were something like £350 a night, um, so I passed on that one, but we'll go into that a bit more later. Um, another challenge for me was early December is a very busy time of year, yeah? So because it's an early time of year, uh, it's a busy time of year to park out four full days plus travel time um, to go to Toronto. It's really, it's it's a challenge. Um, and yeah, uh, that is how I was feeling before I attended. So I was a bit kind of like, what's going on here? I, I felt like comms weren't like that strong. So yeah, I got on the, on the plane to Toronto feeling a little bit unconfident um, about what was gonna be happening. Uh, next was the check-in. So got to Toronto, um, I went to check-in. I thought maybe there'd be like a little social event or like an impromptu mixer or something. 
Um, and there were a couple of attendees that were also checking in the evening before, um, and they were kind of hugging and chatting, but they obviously knew each other from past events. So I was like, hi, and then just went on my merry way to my condo in the next block down the road. Um, let's see, the goodie bag that I got at check-in, not gonna lie, again, for the price of the event, um, at the time I was a bit underwhelmed, but they make up for it later on, I promise you. Um, but I was like, oh wow, okay, thanks for the goodie bag. Um, it basically just had materials for, you know, the schedule, so I finally got that. Um, along with, um, like, some really good vegan snacks, loved those. Um, what else did it include? I think that, oh, it had, like, something about uh, Icon X, which was Robin Sharma's, like, top level, you know, it was, like, encouraging you to, to look into Icon X and sign up for it if you can. Um, let's see, uh, the last point about the Ritz, so yeah, so I would say that in general about, it, the split is 50-50 between people that do stay there and people that don't. Um, when I looked into it, it was like 300, 350 pound a night, and the Airbnb in the next block down the road was like 50 quid a night, and I was just like, I can't, I can't like just spend that much money if, if uh, I'm not even going to be in the room because you're always at the event. So for me, it, it didn't make a big difference. Um, so that was check-in. All right, so how a typical day goes. Um, so there's one day, uh, each day has a theme, uh, and the themes are, let's see, we can go, so I'll go through the themes in a minute. But basically, you start with each day, um, breakfast is included, so they have like a beautiful breakfast spread. Um, it really is extremely nice. Um, and the event starts every morning, I'm just checking, 8 a.m., 8 a.m. on the first day, and then 9 a.m. on days two, three, and four. Um, and yeah, I love an early start, so I like that. Um, in terms of what it's like when you come in, so you come in, you come up the little lift of the stairs, um, and there's a beautiful breakfast spread out, so you kind of walk around the breakfast spread, and then at the end of the breakfast spread it, are the doors to enter the event. I don't know if you've ever watched on Netflix Tony Robbins's. Uh, he, they did like a recording of one of Tony Robbins's events, Date with Destiny, and in that, when they open the doors, people are like running to the front of the freaking event, like they're sprinting to get a front chair. So it wasn't that crazy. I think the Titan Summit is a slightly uh, more reserved group, maybe, um, but people were definitely at the door, like ready to go. And I love a good race, so I was like, oh wait, if everyone's really excited, I better get near the front. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, I did a little like mega quick walk to, to get a decent seat for the day, so that was kind of fun. Um, let's see, each table, so the way the event's set up is that there's like a big stage, um, and then there's tables, oh gosh, I'm so, I don't know how many tables, maybe 20 tables, each table has about um, eight chairs at it. Um, each table had water, it had those beautiful glasses that are like Mexican with a bit of like the blue in them, um, and there were a bunch of Ritz pencils for writing. I think there were also pads, um, and yeah, I think it would have been great to provide pens, but the pencils are fine. Um, so yeah, and that's where you go and you sit down and you keep your seat for the whole day. So when you get up, you don't have to, to really worry about like getting moved or someone taking your chair. Once you have a seat for the first uh, kickoff of the day, you're in that chair all day, unless there were a different open seat and you wanted to move. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. Um, so sat down, go through the first two sessions, um, and yeah, I'm just checking Let's see, so typically there's a session in the morning and then there's a break and then there's another session and then there's lunch. Yeah, in general, that's how it works. Um, and so during the breaks, they've got like healthy, like vegan and organic snacks and it honestly, the food was really good. Um, so yeah, so do the breaks and then at lunch, the way it works uh, is that there is a, a huge buffet. Um, they have two of them, so you don't have to wait in a really long queue. It's really quick service. Um, the staff at the Ritz are amazing um, and they're just so kind and they serve their food so well. It was a dream. Um, I really like the soups at lunch, so please Titan Summit, keep that for next year. Um, in terms of the breaks, Everyone is ushered in and out of the room for every single break. 
Um, I think that in looking back, this is a good thing because it forces everyone out of the room. You have to socialize with people. You have to kind of do some nice polite chatting and, and get to know new people, which is good for me to get pushed to go be social. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was nice, but also people leave their stuff in their chairs and just personally I've been to events that I thought were safe and then my stuff's gotten stolen laptops and iPhones and stuff so I just found it a bit annoying that I felt the urge to pack everything up at every break because I didn't well I ended up leaving my iPad behind because I just didn't want to risk it um, but yeah so when you come back from each break there's a new present waiting for you it's awesome. It's like Christmas every break. Um, so I'll go through some of the swag a little bit later. Um, and then after lunch, there are a couple of more speakers. So typically, yeah, so lunch would be like 1230-ish to 130-ish. Um, and then there would be two or three, yeah, three speakers in the afternoon, usually and peppered with a break around 330, 3 or 330, and then a final session for the day. Um, so yeah, that is the, the makeup for, for the day. Um, and then, yeah, you're done at about, uh, let's see, five o'clock, five or five or five thirty. Um, so yeah, it's a long day, right? It's like nine or eight or nine hours. Um, but it's good. So that is the schedule for a typical day. Just to give you a bit more of a sense. Let's see. So day one was the elite performance and personal mastery day. Like that was the topic and the focus. Uh, for the second day, uh, the topic was rare air health and maximum longevity. Um, so I really liked that day. It was, it was awesome. I'm talking about health. Uh, day three was exponential business results and creating a world-class company. So that was the business day. Loved it. It was so good. Um, and day four was uh, elevating the world and making history. So it was a uh, kind of to leave you on a high of inspiration. And trust me, it does. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, so those are the four days and the four topics. Um, and yeah, in terms of observations, so this is my next section. Um, the Titan Summit, in my mind, kind of provides guidance, solutions, and advice on a way of life the way that I would suggest religion uh, used to do for many people. It's kind of weird, but it focuses on both your mind, your soul, your heart, your health. Uh, just, it just, it, it kind of provides a whole uh, insights into many different elements of your life and how you can improve it. Um, let's see. So on day one, Robin spoke, um, and he also shared a bunch of his modules. And so one of my observations is that when you see Robin Sharma for the first time in real life, if you've been, uh, following him for as long as I have, this sounds so cheesy. It's a bit like, I would imagine people seeing like a guru or like Jesus for the first time. It's like, oh my God, he is real. Like, it's just really funny. It's a weird feeling to actually see him. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of weird. Um, other things that I found were a bit like replace, rep I mean this in a good way. They're kind of like doing things that I've seen in my childhood in a church environment. So things like uh, reciting phrases, everyone shaking hands with strangers at certain parts. Um, there's this like friendly blonde lady going around. She's Australian and she like hugs everyone. I don't think she's being paid. I think she just goes around hugging people. It's really nice. Um, let's see. There's also like you have to hold people's hands at your table, like literally hold hands and then chant together things that Robin says. And honestly, at the end of my first day, I thought it was there's a reason I'm an American living in the UK and it's because I try to avoid those kind of things typically. Um, but it, it was as if I was the one not drinking the Kool-Aid and everyone else had drunk it and loved it. But once you just let go of your reservedness, if that's even a word, it was awesome. So I can see why some people wouldn't like it, but actually if you just let it go, it's awesome. So just, just, hold hands, do the chants, 
you're going to have a great time. Um, another observation that I had was that the quality of people who attend the event is very high. So I met a lot of interesting entrepreneurs from around the world. So like oh, I met an amazing woman who runs a social consultancy some kind in Egypt. I met tech leaders from Seattle. I met cryptocurrency kind of traders and, and uh, developers of platforms from Mexico. Like I've met so many interesting people doing interesting things around the world. But that said, I, it is important to highlight that there's no application process for this event. So if you've got the money, you can attend. That's the end of the story. Um, there are more Rolexes in that room than like at the Racket and Tennis Club on Park Avenue, New York. It's just like a very elite group of people. Um, but I think just personally that the event might benefit from even a tiny application process just because I felt like there were definitely some people there who did not want to be there and they, I found them distracting and if I would, had to be at a table with them, they, it was almost like they'd been sent there by someone else and they didn't want to be there. And for me personally, that really took away a bit from the sessions. Uh, like I remember which sessions I was near those people in because they weren't on board with everyone else and I found that really distracting. Um, and the next point is about Robin groupies. Okay, so there is a Robin fan club of people who have been attending his events for a, a many years and they are lovely because people who would want to come to these events frequently are going to probably be pretty good human beings. However, for me as a newbie, I would say that sometimes I felt slight, slightly excluded. I, I don't know if that's even the right phrase, but like, and sometimes the people that have been there many times, they like talk in like what I can only describe as Robin Sharma code. Like there was one woman I was sitting with at a table and, you know, exchange names and where we're from. And I was like, oh, like, so how do you like to spend your time? Like, do you have a, a business or, you know, and her response was, I serve people. And she just left it at that. I was like, what does that mean? You, you serve people because you're not serving me by giving these cryptic answers that you read in a Robin Sharma book. So <laughs> I think my point is that sometimes it was just a bit much like if you're not on the same level of like, I don't know, I just felt like I was missing something. Um, let's see. And you can, uh, I don't think that it, you feel sidelined. But yeah, it's just kind of like, the people that have been before definitely maybe get it a bit more. I don't know. Um, let's see. I also felt like uh, Robin always highlights uh, people who have come to multiple events, which is really good. Um, but it's a self-selecting group, right? Like the only people that are going to come back are going to be the ones that really like it. There are going to be some people who, who never came back. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't mind just hearing a few more perspectives about what people thought of the Titan Summit. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Robin groupies, they're, they're, that's a thing, so be prepared. Um, next, um, I noticed, so I have a little rule, just a personal rule, if I am the youngest person in the room, or if I am the only, if I'm the only woman in a room, it's probably a good room to be in and I should probably work really hard to try and stay in that room. Um, the, I was definitely, there were some, one thing that's cool is that some people actually bring their kids to this event, like older kids, right? Like late teens and, and early twenties. Um, but otherwise I was probably one of the youngest people, I'm 30 and I was probably one of the youngest people there that like came. Most people, I would say in general, were between 40 and 65. I'd say the median age. Yeah, I mean, it was maybe like 50, 47 to 53 ish. I don't know. Something like that. Um, but yeah, so in terms of the female to male split, I thought it was a really good uh, show for women. But um, yeah, maybe like 30% female. I'm not quite sure to be completely honest. Um, let's see. Another observation is that Robin's staff, they are so on the ball. They are so friendly and helpful. Um, my flight got canceled for weather issues and one of Robin's staff like gave me her mobile phone to use for like calling local numbers and stuff. And it, she was just like really nice. I was like, thank you so much. I don't even need this, but sure. 
So that was really nice. Um, let's see. I would suggest that in general, this is just an observation, extroverts might do a little bit better at the Titan Summit. Um, just because uh, for me, at the end of a 10 hour day, I need to chill out alone, like I'm really tired and I just want to be alone and think about what I've absorbed that day or not absorbed, that's probably my issue. Um, and I wonder if maybe I missed out a bit on some of like making more social connections or kind of like bonding with other attendees because at 6pm I was just like ready to go back to my condo from Airbnb, eat some sushi quietly read my notes and go to bed. Like, that was me. Um, so yeah, um, in terms of one other point about the social side of things, there was a last minute social event that was put on on the Saturday evening. And that was really nice that they went to the effort of organizing that. Um, but I would say that should kind of be standard. There should probably be an organized event put on by the Titan Summit for at least one evening. Um, just because it kind of helps you meet people, etc. Um, one tiny point on that is that it was a last minute organization thing, so I thought it was great they did it, but they also made us buy our own drinks. And again, maybe this is in line with the hotel comment from earlier, but I think if you've spent that much money on an event to then charge people for two or three gin and tonics, I, I personally just find it a bit petty. And for me, it goes against the focus uh, that Robin always talks about of being generous. Um, I know when I'm out with colleagues or friends, like I always try to pay for the drinks. Like it's a nice thing to do and it's not very much money. So I just thought that was a little petty, but you know, not the biggest deal by any means. Um, let's see, okay, speakers, quality of their words and who spoke. Oh my gosh, guys. So the speakers were absolutely outstanding. Like they're, they're amazing, they really are. It was great to see them. Um, I have this book here, maybe you can see it, um, and I will just go through. Obviously, the main speaker was Robin Sharma. So he hosted, let's see, the entire first day, um, so except for at the end of the day, but you know, you kind of get like a big shot of Robin that lasts you through, uh, through past lunch on day one. So that was really cool. Oh my gosh, okay. So Nando Parado, this guy is amazing. I mean, the whole event was just, I will say this about every speaker, so I, I shouldn't, but the whole event was worth it just to see him, you know. Um, but then I feel the same way about the next person, Ben Zander. So Nando Parado, um, he actually was on a flight uh, when he was a teenager or about 20, I would guess. Um, fly and his plane crashed and he had to survive in the mountains of Argentina, I believe, um, in the Andes Mountains. So yeah, his story was amazing um, and it really just touched on a lot of different life themes. The next one, oh my god, Ben Zander. This, I think he's done a TED Talk. I'll try and find it and put a link below. He was amazing. So he was like everyone's it's favorite... So uh, a professor from university or, you know, he was just the best. Um, let's see, Marion Williamson. Uh, oh, so sorry, let me just say, Ben Zander is a composer or, a, you know, leads orchestras, things like this. He's very musical. Um, uh, conductor of the Boston Philharmonic, you know, a small orchestra. Um, but yeah, he just talked, I don't even remember, it was just about life lessons. All I remember is that he said, if shit hits the fan, always say how fascinating, and I've been doing that, and it's really working. Um, next up was Marianne Williamson. Okay, if Glinda, the good witch from The Wizard of Oz, if she lived on the Upper East Side, she, she would be Marianne Williamson. I mean, this woman was just so cool. She wrote a book called A Return to Love, and she was talking about spirituality, and honestly, it was amazing. Uh, next was Jason Silva. Jason Silva is a, what is he? He's a, he's a, a TV presenter, I think. Uh, and yeah, I would say he was the only bad speaker in the entire event. So if he was speaking for like, hold on, I won't look, but I think he was speaking for like an hour and a half. And if in total we had like, like eight, like 32 hours of, 
people speaking to have 1.5 over 32. What is that? Just under 5%, I think. If like 5% of all the talking that happened during a four-day event was bad, I'd say that's pretty good going because 95% was outstanding. Um, but yeah, he was like, he, he was so weird. He was like yelling about the universe at us. And like, I'm a millennial and I wasn't getting it. And I was like, well, then a lot of the other people here probably aren't understanding this. Um, and then he would play videos while he was standing on the stage of himself, dressed like he was a trucker from the deep south in Central Park. He was lost in Central Park, like walking around trees. It was so freaking weird. Um, I'm really surprised at how off-piste he was for the event. And it leads me to believe that uh, Robin or his team just did not check what on earth this guy was bringing because it, it, it was terrible. Um, but everyone else was good. So yeah, Nick Yaris was amazing. So this guy was on death row and he talked about forgiveness and he was just a very eloquent speaker. I aspire to be that good one day. Um, I clearly have a long way to go, yeah. <laughs> Uh, next was, oh my gosh, Dr. Greg Wells. Okay, so he wrote a book called The Ripple Effect. Um, and I think he's actually, I think he might be from Toronto. I don't know, or he lives there. Um, but he talked about health and well-being um, and longevity. And he was absolutely outstanding. So yeah, get The Ripple Effect. Uh, next, also on the health side, was Dr. James Rouse. This guy's like has never stopped smiling in his whole life. I think he probably goes to sleep and he's probably still smiling. He is so full of joy. It is crazy. So yeah, he also spoke about, he told like some amazing stories um, about like about his family even. He says that he keeps his mobile phone charging in a tree house outside of his house to keep it away from him so that when he's home, he can actually focus on things that are important. I was like, that's a really cool idea. I don't have a tree to put a tree house in, but maybe I could do something similar and just put it in another room. Um, let's see, next, Dr. Filippo Ongaro, an Italian guy. So he was talking about uh, nutrition and about uh, neurology and the science between what you're eating, what you're putting in your body. He was really good as well. Uh, Phil Mc McKernan, I guess, Phil McKernan. He was pretty cool. Um, so he was talking, he was more about like, he calls himself a modern day philosopher of the human experience. Um, he talked about uh, relationships. He was more kind of like relationship based and uh, talking about like how to improve relationships. Uh, next was Alyssa Monks, who was an artist. She spoke on day one. And it was really interesting to see her speak because um, she showed the progression of her work over time. And I don't know many artists, so I found it quite interesting to see how she, her, her style has developed. And um, then we had Scott Stratton. I've seen him speak once before at an event in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, he's funny. He's very funny. Um, I wouldn't say he showed me anything mind blowing, but he was definitely entertaining. Um, he's written a book called Unbranding, um, which I definitely recommend you check out. Um, and then, of course, Jim McDonald. This guy is a legend. Uh, so he spoke on the business day. He's the former CEO of Starbucks. Um, I think he's, yeah, known for, for getting booted out of Starbucks. And there was such an air of humility about him. I loved it. He's done some kind of kooky things in the past. I think he was also, was it Pathmark? I'm reading. Uh, Pathmark or another like giant American grocery store chain um, that he was CEO of and it was just fascinating to hear his stories. He was so approachable. I would like just just to be near him was awesome. So strongly strongly uh, recommend we find some videos on that. Maybe you know what I will go onto YouTube and I will make a playlist of talks that I can find from everyone who spoke at the Titan Summit. Um, and I'll put a link in the description box down below so you can just look at that. Um, and then, oh, one thing I didn't mention that happens almost every day is that Robin has musicians. So actually, you, uh, so there's a guy called Scott McMahon um, and he is a musician, he, like a street musician in London. He was amazing. 
And the other funny thing is, he looks just like Tom Cruise. It's insane. Um, so yes, and he has a Scottish accent and he can just, his songs were beautiful. And then we also had Tim Nichols, who is a Grammy Award winning songwriter. He wrote a song sung by, is it by Garth Brooks? Uh, Tim McGraw, sorry. Um, uh, Live Like You Were Dying. Oh my gosh. So then he played that, like it was awesome. I love the music in the afternoons. I think that was a really great touch. Um, so yeah, that was cool. In terms of, so that's like a quick, quick, it doesn't do anything justice, but those were the speakers and uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, that's uh, what I, what I thought was interesting. The next section is about gifts and swag. Okay, so like I said, when you come back from breaks or lunch at your chair, sometimes I'd say like 50% of the time, there's like a gift waiting for you. It's so cool. So one thing that was frequent was if someone's talking, uh, if uh, that hadn't they've written a book, so you then get the book. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, so here we have the ripple effect. Greg Wells, strongly recommend. Oh, in the um, in the uh, signing on uh, little goodie bag, we got an MP3 ready version of the monk who sold his Ferrari. So that's good for listening to while you're at the gym. Uh, the Return to Love. So this is uh, Marianne Williamson. She's like, she, she made a hilarious joke about herself being a Jew from Texas. And it was just, she just has like really cool insights. I haven't read her book yet, which, which does bug me, but strongly recommend based on her talk. Next is, so yeah, so this is Scott Stratton uh, and Unbranding. So yeah, good one. Okay, this is Nando's book about his plane crash and surviving in the Andes. Oh my gosh, definitely worth a read. I haven't read it yet. There's also a, um, a very famous film about it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Miracle in the Andes, I think it may be. No, I don't know what the film's called. Sorry. But yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Let's see. Oh, James Rouse, Mind, Body, Life, Mastery. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, looks good. I haven't read these yet. I'm so sorry. Uh, rich on paper, poor on life. So yeah, I really, I really liked Phil McKernan. Um, so three paths to more money and meaning. I mean, it says to more meaning and money, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but he was, he was very good uh, at speaking. Um, and then last but certainly not least, uh, so this is, excuse me, Nick Yaris, who was on death row and lived on death row for a number of years. Uh, seven Days to Live. So he was an amazing speaker. Um, he actually had to do his talk via Skype because the Canadian government would not let him into the country from the U.S. Because I guess because of his like criminal record. I... It was just really sad that that happened, but it, they still, you know, he did a great job and we did it over Skype. It was completely worth it. Um, so yeah, the other speaker, of course, that I forgot to mention uh, in a bit more detail was Robin himself. Um, oh, one thing to point out is that Robin actually went into more detail about his own background and personal story. And one of my favorite things was that he brought out um, an old edition of one of his original books that he wrote you know, and it was called something like, find the power to change yourself in 30 days. And there's like a picture of him from like 20 years ago. And he's got like this little curly hair. And it, it was just, it was so cool to see his more about to learn about his background and see his old work. Um, because it gave me hope that like, he didn't just roll out of bed and have everything running as smoothly as it runs today. Um, he's had to work at that as well over many, many years. Um, and I just found that quite uh, reassuring, really. So yeah, so that's a little bit about the swag. What else did we get here? Ah, the posters. Okay, guys, I will try and get JPEG versions of these or something, or, or I'll scan them. I don't know. I'll try and share them in a better format. But this one is the first, the 35 lessons of the great masters. And so these are just quotes from like different people that have spoken. Um, so that was one. The next one uh, is the Titan principles to lead a giant life, begin with epic thoughts uh, and more wisdom along those lines. So yeah, as soon as I like get these online somewhere, I'll put a link to them um, in, the uh, in my little like comment box below. Um, so you can read them better by yourself. Um, and then this one 
is this is like the kind of thing that you chant in the morning together. You uh, must own your genius to rise to world class, lead your field, etc. So those were really cool to receive. Um, I need to get mine framed. Uh, what else? There were a couple of like workshop papers that were shared. Um, let's see, this one, this one was the heroic ambition blueprint. So you put down your big five for 2018, uh, your main, uh, your five values for 2018. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that's similar to like what's in personal mastery, um, top five core rituals, etc. And then like your goals throughout uh, the different months. So, you know, I think what this is great at is giving people a structure to then put together uh, their, you know, their plan for the year, etc. So, yep, definitely a good one there. Okay, this was pretty cool. Uh, five years of inspiration from Titan's uh, summits of the past. So it's literally just like quotes. This is the kind of thing that I would take with me on holiday and like read and reflect on, but you know, it's just, it's easily transportable. So that's quite cool. Um, let's see. So yeah, that's the kind of swag you get. Oh, I also got an, a amazing uh, water bottle, which I've been using. So I don't have it here now, but it looks great. It's one of those trendy like metal ones that everyone's using these days. Um, so yeah, that is the swag in a nutshell. Tips and tricks, number one, bring with you to the Titan Summit if you've purchased a ticket and you're coming. Um, one of those uh, like pack, you know, like what you roll posters up in um, so that your posters don't get injured because otherwise they get a little, a little floppy and, and get damaged in your suitcase when you're traveling home. Uh, next is to bring tons of business cards. I forgot this and had some made up uh, the night before at like a 24 hour printing place, but just don't forget your business cards. Uh, next point is dress code. So there's no dress code officially, but I would say in general, people were ready to, to be more like business casual. Um, I would want to be in jeans and a hoodie, but I brought more appropriate like dress wear, um, kind of like you're going to a formal meeting, not like suit and tie, but I would suggest like shoes, jeans, and, and a button down top shirt. It is kind of like the general look I would go for. Um, yeah, I brought like a blouse and some like work skirts, stuff like that. Um, let's see, make sure that you download a Yap a Yap is an app which the Titan Summit uses to then build their own mini app within. Um, so that is important. I'm pretty sure you can't gain access unless you are a Titan attendee because it like logs everyone's uh, email addresses. So yeah, if you're going, you will have access, which is really cool. Um, and it has a lot of like Robin's modules in there, which is awesome. Um, next is to bring tons of your favorite writing utensils so that you don't have to worry about running out of pens like I did. Um, right. let, let's see. Shh. Okay, the next point is that everyone writes in notebooks. So you get a notebook on your first day. Um, I mean, mine is literally like full of notes. And then on the final day, Robin signed it. It says, Dear Chelsea, stay great, R. Um, but yeah, so people aren't typing. You're kind of encouraged to be present in the moment and not use your mobile phone or a laptop. Um, so I felt like I should probably write my notes out like most people. And then I actually uh, kind of wrote them, typed them up on my plane ride home, which was a really good way to like absorb them while they were still fresh in my mind. Um, let's see, be prepared, another tip to do no real work during these four days because you really can't, like you're thinking all day and learning um, and then you're really tired by the end of the day. I just, if you're thinking, oh, I could just do that report on the side on the second day. I don't think you can, um, it, it's pretty exhausting. Um, and then last but not least is that there is a Facebook group for you to join after the event, which is really nice that the Titan team set that up. Um, I would suggest, I, I got invited, I don't know how, to a WhatsApp group um, of some of the Titan attendees, and that was really cool. Um, it's much easier, in my opinion, to liaise with people on WhatsApp rather than having to like I don't know, go through what people are baking for the day and all that jazz in order to like actually talk to people about the stuff you want to talk to them about on Facebook. So yeah, it just different formats for different people. Um, let's see. Okay, so my final thoughts are that this event has genuinely, I've always been a pretty good planner, but this event has really helped me like with motivating me in like how I should 
work on my business in 2018. Um, I think that in general, um, I've always been good at having a plan, but this time it's kind of like coming from a better place inside me, which I mean, I can see a difference um, in how I'm working and uh, I'm really excited about it. Like it's Saturday today, and I freaking woke up at 5.20 a.m. naturally, and I was like excited to get going for the day. So I'm, yeah, I'm on cloud nine. Um, but yeah, I would strongly, strongly recommend, if you can, uh, coming to the Titan Summit. It's, it's a great, great event. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, so that's it. Those are my thoughts. But if you have any questions, please, please do let me know. Either put a comment down below or you can tweet me at Chelsea Blacker. Um, depending on like if anyone ever watches this video, I will pop something up on, uh, like if you want to know more, maybe more of like my learnings from the different events or speakers or something, um, I could write that up as a blog post on ChelseaBlacker.com or I could just chuck a video together. I don't know. Let me see like if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, I'll just stop at this video. But I hope you found it useful. I know personally, I would have really benefited or appreciated um, getting some insights like this from someone who had attended past events. Um, so yeah, let me know. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.